we're in the emergency services business and we need to be in the 100% business. There's really no answer to a person if there's a delay in, in response. Lightning protection certainly isn't part of the knowledge held by electricians or general contractors. Engineers and, and designers even do not know about proper lightning protection. The National Electric Code maybe addresses it as far as interconnecting to it, but very little else. To us, it's very important that lightning protection gets installed properly because an improper system can do more damage than, than uh, no system at all. Typically, uh, lightning protection systems are designed to UL 96A, NFPA 780, and the LPI 175. The value of a lightning protection system to any commercial structure is the protection of not only the structure itself, but the contents. The loss of equipment that you can get from a nearby strike would probably pay for three times what it would cost to install the lightning protection system. On our old firehouse that we had on this property, we had a, a substantial lightning strike. It struck our radio system in a communication center to such an extent it knocked us off the air. We want to make sure we weren't going to be put in that position again. So uh, when we decided to build a new firehouse, we determined that it was a, a good value to install a lightning protection system. There are five essential elements to a lightning protection system. First one is the lightning rod, the air terminal, the strike termination device. That you see at the top of the roof. Second part is the lightning protection conductor. Each strike termination device, air terminal, has two paths to ground. So this conductor routed throughout the structure, all continuous to um, earth. Uh, the third part is the um, bonding of all conductive elements, whether they be the electrical system itself, but any other uh, path to ground that lightning may take. The fourth element is the actual grounding elements themselves, the ground connectors, ground rods, everything that's buried in the earth as far as conductor. And the last one is the surge protection, which are required by our standards to be on any of the incoming, the electrical or phone or cable or media. We're required to put a surge protection device on. We design a system based on 150-foot strike radius. We place air terminals where they're required by those measurements, and then all air terminals are connected together with conductors and not only to each other but to the ground at not less than every 100 feet of perimeter. Any item we come next to um, that has a remote ground path, a body of inductance, we will uh, bond that within a six-foot side flash distance. But also we have to bond any underground pipe that's metallic where lightning might follow that in, and all grounded systems must be tied together. The generator outside is bonded. The compressors that we come within six feet of uh, are all bonded. Any structural steel members would be bonded. Door tracks, if they have a remote path to ground, Downspouts, if the downspouts went into a metal pipe in the ground, would be bonded as well. We have actually two halos in the building. One is in the communication center and one is in the server room where everything is terminated. Our communication center is attached to a 140-foot tower that's behind this facility that is also bonded to um, all the other buildings on the complex. The lightning cable here is class one, which is rated for under 75 feet in height. It's 29 strands of 17 gauge copper. I would say it's more advantageous to use a stranded conductor um, to, in a lightning protection system as opposed to a solid. There's a lot more surface area for the, the lightning current to travel on. The lightning protection system is best effective when phased in, when building a structure. When the foundation is going in, we can bond the rebar. We can leave tails up in the concrete where the structural steel is going to be or where the water is going to be. We can bond the, the mats of the floor before that's poured. It's not a do-it-yourself type of a project. You have to get people in the industry who are trained and certified by the Lightning Protection Institute to do the installation so that you know it's done right. And even then, you're going to want to have a third-party agency, whether they be Lightning Protection Institute or UL, inspect the installation to make sure that it is done right.